Must you? Must I what? Trying to drive me to madness is what it is. Why? I don't... What's the problem? It's conspiracy. I swear. What? 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 What is disturbing you? Oh, the glasses! You freaking want to know the glasses? The glasses! Do you know what's funny is these don't even have any lenses in them. <laughs> they, uh, one of the brands comes into the store and they always bring us little props. Like this past weekend, they brought us bright pink pom poms that we had to like shake around all day. And one day they they brought us these funky pink glasses to wear all day and they let us bring them home. So. But now. So I'm like a really extra obnoxious version of Zoe Deschanel today. Because the glasses are hot pink and they match my hippo. Well, you're like the anti Zoe Deschanel because you're, she's got the darker colors and you've got the red with the pink. So, you know, you're like you're like, you, you know, or she's yeah. like the anti Tara. I should say. Yeah. That's and if I'm we thinking. ever actually touch the universe will implode. These are kind of really distracting, though, because my whole peripheral vision is pink. <laughs> I think we're going to lose them because like it's like seeing a movie in letterbox but all the letterbox is hot pink it's a little disconcerting after the while so it's like barbie vision kind of yeah all righty this week every you know what this this show really is just a special thing every week i mean i mean honestly Every it's week like an after school special with really bad language every week. It gives me something that just makes me happy and sad all at the same time. And I don't understand it. I don't understand these feelings, but I do my best to deal with them. You know. But Have you talked to someone about these feelings? Yes, <laughs> about 600 people right now. Well, they're no help. No, they certainly aren't. Right uh, now, they're just annoyed that I took off the cheesy pink glasses. That's all they care about. Shall we begin? Let's begin. Let it begin. Let it begin. Each week, Catherine goes out. The worldwide interwebs finds all sorts of horrible stuff. Brings it back here for a little set segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this first one is a thing of beauty. Literally. Well, no, not literally. Some of you won't think this beautiful at all, but for two reasons. And as soon as you see the headline, you're going to understand. And let me get it to you. I'm, I'm just keeping you guys in suspense a wee bit longer because it's just, I'm so happy. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I'm sad. I'm sappy. <clears throat> Five foot tall snow penis shocks motorists in Samford. Huh. <laughs> Stun motorists in Stanford. This is Connecticut. Um, no, 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 it's not like, Connecticut. This it's this UK. England. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's even weirder. I didn't think they did that sort of. Well, no, wait. The, well, she's there. They do that sort of thing. Have you ever seen Monty Python? I have. Stun motorists in Stanford were getting an unexpected eyeful after someone built a five foot tall snow penis on a grass verge near Morrison's. The ice sculpture appeared yesterday in the corner of Uffington and Priory Road, surprising drivers and shoppers alike. One amused motorist told Stanford people, I spotted it on my way to work and had to do a double take. It popped up yesterday. <laughs> well done, writer. It's about five feet tall. And, what can, and from what I can tell is anatomically correct, but obviously I didn't study it too long. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of impressed by that because have you ever tried to build a snowman? No, yeah, it's, I, really, it's hard. It, it's really fucking hard. Like, and so, you know what? So is to this you, just yeah. Just like, <laughs> well, it doesn't say it's erect. It could have been lying down. Oh no 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 no! There, there is a picture. It's at the bottom. It's there. I don't see click, a picture. Click here if you wish to see the image. It's at the bottom. Oh, oh! I wish to see the image. 
That's a penis. Wow. All right. Yeah. I love that you can see the grass. Like they get to use a lot of snow. Even better. Uh, this is this is the part that I love. Close to no, not well. One of the parts close to the sculpture. Someone, whether it's the same artist, is unknown. Has scraped away the snow to write the words "penis down." <laughs> So, was this their way of like claiming the town? Were they planting their flag? They were pitching a tent, at least. Uh, I'm just saying I'm impressed because that's really difficult. Like, snow is not an easy medium with which to work. So, I'm pretty impressed. I give them high marks for. It's got the little, you know, and and it's it's a circumcised penis, no less. Yeah, balls and all. So yeah, you know, he's right with God. That 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 snow penis is right with the Lord. So you know, just saying. Okay. Well, um, I mean, as long as it's Jewish. Well, yeah. Okay, this one is. We get stupid criminals all the fucking time. It's it's. All the fucking time. It's rare when them this happens. And we have stupid. This is just an amazing amount of stupid. Escaped inmate gone five days before officials knew. Police and U.S. Marshals are searching for a man allegedly escaped at from a Detroit jail by posing as another inmate on the lam for five days before officials knew he was gone. According to police, Rocky Marquez, 34, switched ID wristbands with another inmate who was about to be freed on bond. Marquez then simply walked out of Wayne County Jail. Huh. Well, I mean... Idiocracy! No, I mean, if he looked enough like the guy and they switched wristbands... You got to figure there's what, like two guards to every 50 prisoners, maybe. That's got to be like, it's not like they're personally interacting but with every prisoner every don't day. Don't they check like fingerprints and shit? Don't they actually have a book when they come in with the mug shot that they can look in and go? Not every day. That's the guy. Well, they're not going to check everybody every day. Yeah, but when he's heading out, when he's about to walk out the door, can't they just say... Excuse me a second, sir. Yeah, all right. Yeah, probably. We're going to get out but the like, book and we're going to look and see if the numbers and shit match. My mom worked in the county jail for a few years and like she was a substance abuse counselor. So she would only see her guys maybe twice a week. <laughs> so, you know. I just I'm. He was arrested in Detroit after U.S. Marshals tracked a car they believed he was using uh, to the city. Uh, his criminal record includes drug smuggling, perjury, and witness tampering. It, tampering was waiting extradition to Phoenix when he escaped last week. Um, this is a very serious matter, and the most important thing is we need to get this guy back in custody. The Fugitive Apprehension Team, along with U.S. Marshals and other police agencies, are still searching for him. So he's loose, ladies and gentlemen. I think the better question is, did that other inmate voluntarily switch wristbands with him? Yeah. And if so, why? Yeah. Why would you volunteer to stay in jail so some other asshole could leave? Two reasons. Either one, when I get out of here, I'm going to give you money. Or two, while I'm in here, I won't put things in your butt. I suppose. <laughs> I, I that's that's pretty much it. You know. I mean, I just feel like the other guy doesn't really get much out of it. You know, like well, so he, help me escape. You stay here. No, fuck you. I'm going home. Now the other question is: Is he getting to go out? Is have they letting him go now? The other guy. I imagine they would have to. He was up for bond. Like, he's supposed to be walking free. Well, we'll see if he done fucked up. Although, I mean, he did now aid in an escape, so that might 
screw things up for him. Huh, it's you know what they check they they do they do sh- rudimentary checks of this shit at like a high school and stuff. Just get out the yearbook or the mugshot book and be like, oh yeah. I mean, you're right. I feel like before they release someone, they should make sure it's the right person. <laughs> it doesn't seem like asking so very much. Oh God, is this the only time it's happened? You think? Well, no, it says this guy did it before. It's later on in the story. This was not the first time Marquez staged a jailbreak. According to U.S. Marshal David Gonzalez, Marquez pulled the same stunt in a Phoenix prison eight months ago when he switched wristbands with another inmate who he had befriended and who had a similar complexion and build. He obviously, this is the dumbest quote. He obviously has a penchant for getting out of jail and wanting to stay out of jail, but hopefully we can put an end to that run here soon. No, no. It's so weird. It's like he doesn't want to be in jail. (laughs) I know. Totally unique to this one guy. It's like his thing. He doesn't want to be in jail. Next, you'll be telling us that he doesn't want to serve jury duty. I mean, I know, right? I know. It's just crazy. What a stupid quote. What a (laughs) fucking idiot. (laughs) And you wonder how he got out. It's like this guy doesn't want to be in jail. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, before you speak. (sighs) The next one is a we got video. Let's have a look here. Um, It's from California and uh, motorists the other day had to contend with the following. Just the headline makes me fucking hate these people. Idiots shut down a California highway so they can do donuts. Um, the video appropriately titled Out Here Shutting Shit Down shows some Mustangs, a Camaro, and a 240SX doing some spins on the highway until someone announces that the 5 are coming, then they all clear out. Yeah, that just happened. You can see them on the video. <laughs> Okay. Frame by frame. I'm pretty sure we're pulling license plates off this thing. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to be hard. Let's be honest. Yep. Do they just fucking stop in the middle of the highway? Yep. And they had people on either side blocking traffic. They're in Oakland. How did they not get fucking shot? Good question, actually. We have people, we have innocent people getting shot once a fucking week in this country, and nobody took a shot at these guys. Not that I'm advocating such a thing. I would be very sad if they got shot. I'm just saying by probability, you pull this shit in Oakland and nobody pulls a piece on you. I know. America's gone full on fucking Salvador Dali, man. I don't even get it anymore. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Damn right, Punky, $100 in the douche Did you see shot. that last? Did you see that last shot of how many cars were backed up down the highway? Oh, uh. my God. So, yeah, what's going to happen is the cops are going to look at this video, which was put on YouTube. Yeah. And they're going Don't to put your crime on the Internet. They're going to get every single license plate because they can slow the video down. I kind of did this once, but not on purpose. (laughs) I I was driving to work and um, I was on 84, which is the major highway through Connecticut. One of the major highways that runs through Connecticut, the one that's near me. And uh, I kind of, Somebody, I tried to change the lane. I tried to change lanes and someone was trying to change lanes into me at the same time. And knowing that two masses cannot occupy the same space at the same time. Top, top, wrenched, right. I, I wrenched my reel out of the way and uh, ended up kind of losing control of my car. So I fishtailed. On the highway, and this is like nine o'clock in the morning, so this is like rush hour. So I fishtail across three lanes like three times on the highway and wind up six inches from the Jersey barrier 
in the shoulder facing the wrong way and I hit nothing. Tara, I you want to tell me there's no such thing as a benevolent God? I pulled that shit with all kinds of cars on the highway, six inches from the Jersey barrier and didn't hit a damn thing. I love you. I adore you dearly. But with all of these things, you'd come and tell us, how are you alive? Because of the existence of a benevolent God. God, unless there, for some reason he likes me, I think for comedic value. I haven't really worked that out yet. But unless, for some reason, me around and then i had to bust yui on the three lane highway at nine o'clock in the morning that took a while either he really likes you or he doesn't like me no i'm but, just i'm just kidding but you like me i do oh fuck me not God again God loves me or just doesn't fucking want me <laughs> he's like no really keep that hot mess for god's sakes Yet again, fuck me, not again. Sun News, Montreal. Uh, Montreal man calls 911 after being stood up. Man took a bus trip from Montreal to Barrie, north of Toronto, to meet a woman he met online. Called 911 after finding he'd been stood up. Police say the man was supposed to meet the woman he'd been chatting with. Found out that when he arrived, she was nowhere to be found. He became angry and called 911, wanting police to, quote, track down his missing date and find out why she stood him up. When he was reminded about the proper use of 911, the man became even angrier. <sighs> Ellis? I know that when you miss an opportunity to get your penis wet, it seems like an emergency to you. I know this. I get it. But it's not an emergency. Paramedics are not necessary. Police intervention is not needed. This is not an emergency. <laughs> I mean, in a pinch, there's Lou and your hand. You do not need the intervention of official services. What do you want to bet? Penis wet. What do you want to bet that somewhere in the conversation with 911, the term friend zone was invoked? Oh, God. That term is like, I'm just going to tell you all this now. As far as I'm concerned, that term is basically shorthand for please stop speaking to me. I'm not worth knowing. You use that term and you're not being fucking ironic. That is basically you telling me, please stop speaking to me. I am not worth your time because the only reason I will treat you like a decent human being is in the hope that you will fuck me. And when you don't fuck me, I will be bitter and angry about it. The friend zone is for the loading and unloading of passengers only. There is no stopping in the friend zone. The friend zone is for the loading and unloading of douchebags. Okay. Don't do this, man. Don't do this. We have two contenders for the worst tonight. I think it's going to be close. First off, how many times have we said on the show? Why do people do these drugs? I still don't <laughs> get it. I, I don't get it. Do you get it at all? I still don't get meth, dude. Well, this one is even undefined. Okay. Police respond to huffing disturbance. A disturbance at the Phoenix House block of North Quincy Street. I think this is Arizona. I'm not entirely. No, uh, Bethesda, Arlington. This is D.C. area. Um, disturbance uh, prompted a call to police late Monday night when a re resident allegedly, allegedly became out of control while huffing a chemical. A chemical. According to police, two roommates at the Boston-based Substance Abuse Treatment Center alerted a resident advisor their roommate had been acting erratically and their room was in disarray. The resident advisor arrived in the room. The subject was wearing only a t-shirt, had a sheet over his head, while allegedly huffing disinfectant spray. 
Resident advisor called police because the subject was reportedly hissing, speaking in tongues, shaking uncontrollably, trying to eat coins, and had attempted to set his mattress on fire. But wait, it gets better. When they arrived, he was naked and still attempting to eat coins. Officers tried to take the man into custody, but he didn't cooperate. The officers gave him a warning, but he continued to stay on all fours and growl at him. So they successfully tased and handcuffed him. The man then attempted to eat the taser cords. Police said, you know what I'm thinking of right now? Have you ever, you've seen the movie 16 Candles, right? Yes. You know, the part at the end where they give the sister the muscle relaxer before her wedding and she keeps trying to lick her veil. Her veil's over her face and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> that's for some reason, that's the picture that just popped into my head. The <laughs> I feel funky. The piece de resistance. Please say once they managed to handcuff the man, the naked sub subject bent over with his hands still behind his back. And according to police reports, spread his anus open and proclaim <laughs> who wants some. <laughs> then he appeared to have some kind of seizure or shaking fit and fell to the floor where he somehow managed to get his cuffed hands in front of his body. Lysol! Look, they only call it Eucalyptus euphoria. <laughs> like, that's just the name of the scent. Some fucking copywriter got $50 to come up with that so that you would buy it, spray it on your carpet. <laughs> that, that doesn't make it a drug. Lysol! Of all the Lysol! I mean, I guess that you can huff anything that's an aerosol, technically. Stop it! But really, just do whippets like everybody else. <laughs> just... <I'm> gonna... <laughs> did did the other drugs just stop working? Is that the Can problem? Can you even imagine if you did it wrong and actually, like, inhaled all that fucking air freshener? You would never smell again. Well, that, and you would never sneeze again because all your, you know... You would just burn right through your fucking sinuses, like... Maybe out the back of your head. That'd be kind of neat. But everything would smell awesome. It would be the most lavender-scented corpse. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't... I, I, I don't... I don't really get eaten a high that bad. Did the... Uh, my, my... My point... Did the other drugs... Stop working. I no? actually have an uncle who can't smell and it is pretty terrible fate. He's a very unhappy person. Did 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 we wake up one day and suddenly, you know, we didn't work anymore? Is, Obviously. Is you can, I think he was beyond weed long before this. Get, I think this is a situation of needed a high. Pick up what's around. Don't ever do that. Don't ever go, I need to get high. What the fuck do I have? Don't MacGyver your high. <laughs> no good can come for this. You can't MacGyver your high. You can only MacGruber your high. Oh. Words to live by, kids. One to grow on. But wait, we have another contender. Da -da 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 -da. Uh -huh. A new challenger appears. <laughs> This one comes from, uh, I believe, where was this? Uh, Florida. Oh, Florida, yeah. <laughs> of course this is Florida, are you kidding me? Naked assailant. <laughs> Naked assailant terrorizes North Fort Myers family. A resident was tackled by a naked man who had leapt off his roof Monday evening. And the scene only got more bizarre from there. Resident said he was lying in bed when his wife heard what sounded like thunder. The man went outside and saw Bruni, uh, that's the, the man, Matthew, Gregory Matthew Bruni, uh, running around on the roof. He allegedly jump, jumped off and onto the victim, hitting him in the shoulder and knocking him to the ground. 
Deputies say Bruni then ran to the house and pulled a large screen TV off its stand and dumped the contents of a vacuum onto the floor. He then headed toward the couple's son's bedroom where several guns were stored. So the man's wife fired three warning shots. The rest report said Bruni fell to the floor, but then began pleasuring himself. Like you do. He got up off the floor, ran to the son's bedroom, and began rubbing clothing on his face. <laughs> this is another one of those stories where nobody's really awesome because into their son's bedroom where several guns were stored. I will note yet again, Bruni tried to flee the deputies and they ended up using a taser to subdue him. It's a lot of places in the house. You could store your guns. Maybe not your kid's bedroom to store your fucking guns. Here's why I think this guy's got an edge. There's no mention of the drugs here. This is like this is what he was like when he woke up that night. This is au natural in more well, ways than no one. there's no mention of drugs. Uh. That doesn't mean. <laughs> no, no, no. He was taken to the hospital, but doctors told deputies they couldn't identify the substance Bruni was on during the incident. So he was on something. They just don't know what the fuck it was. <laughs> like, he found a UFO and snorted the fucking ashes. <laughs> That's what happened to this guy. He snorted E.T.'s cousin's ashes. If this a, is what happens to you. If a drug ever induces you when shot at, I'll say that again, when shot at to stop, drop, and jerk, this is a bad you know. drug. Well, you know, like Sandra Bullock pointed out in Demolition Man, yeah, I went there. There is a marked connection in our society between sex and violence. I mean, look at look at Michael Bay. Look at the entire career of Michael Bay. It's just pussy and bullets. Pussy and bullets. The two are intertwined. I just it. So who I, I don't know who wins. I just don't know. Is it the guy who we can't figure out what the fuck he's on? Or is it Lysol guy who I got to say, he didn't give a fuck. He was honey badger all the way down. Yeah. Tried to eat money with a sheet on his head. Growled eating at the coins. cops. Eating eating coins. Like, are you going to eat all the pennies and shit out two quarters? No, you're not. <laughs> you are not coin star. <laughs> <laughs> it's never gonna work does his stomach take a 10 percent cut i think you'll take a couple cuts <laughs> <laughs> okay so i guess the first thing we learned tonight is that making snowmen is hard making <laughs> snow dicks is harder Especially but up bump hard yeah yeah, that was not a flaccid one. That one was, you know, stand and deliver, my friend. That one was, that was, that was, that was an ice stick that was ready for action. Um, Isn't there some horror movie where a snowman, like, takes off his carrot nose and fucks a girl with it? I think there is. There's some horror movie about an evil snowman. And in one of the scenes, there's a girl in a shower. And I don't know how he survives the shower because she's obviously in a hot shower and he's a snowman, but whatever. But he like takes off his carrot nose and puts it where a dick should be and fucks her with it. Yeah, that happened. It apparently was called Jack Frost. See, I've seen movies. <laughs> These are the movies that I've seen. Moving on. <laughs> We've learned... That uh, if you are in charge of prison, might help. Double check. Check. Because the first thing I thought of was idiocracy. Oh, no, I'm supposed to be leaving today. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. Just get, you have, we can take a picture with our, sh our shoes come with cameras for fuck's sakes. Take the picture, put it on your computer, you're done. When they leave, it's like, oh shit, it's the same guy. It's, oh, it's not the same guy, stop him. Because yeah. now we've or, got, you know, I mean, they still take fingerprints when they book you, right? Yeah. And I've never been arrested, so I've never actually had my fingerprints taken. And they don't use the ink anymore. They scan them. So it's not that hard to match them up. We've learned that douchebags are not bright. Don't put your crime on the Internet. This isn't hard. No. This should be fucking obvious. And it's not going to be hard for the uh, uh, responding Any officers. with two brain cells to rub together should be able to figure that shit out. You can do it with Windows Movie Maker. Just frame, frame, frame. That's the license plate. Frame, frame, frame. That's the guy's you face. Just, you just need to hit pause on YouTube. And then screen capture that shit. A monkey in a diaper could do it monkey in a diaper would know not to put it on YouTube, probably, because they have survival instinct. We learned that, ladies, sometimes it's a good idea to stand the guy up. Because if he's the sort of guy who would want to get an APB on you for not showing up for dinner... Yeah, dodge the bullet there. Dodge, yeah. Stand stand him up. Like, what's he going to do when you don't return his calls? <laughs> <laughs> or when you stop his best friend? <laughs> well, then he hires the A-team. If you have a problem, if you have a woman who's cheating on you and you're a dick, <laughs> maybe they can help. <laughs> or at least beat the shit out of you. Yeah. Um, And we've learned tonight... The other drugs still work. Pot still just, works. Yeah. Alcohol still works. Hell, even Classic. LSD. Yeah, LSD and cocaine. They still work. We do. Heroin, I, as I understand it, still fucks you up. Yeah, and it's awful. We're not, you know, espousing the use of any drugs. We're just saying, at least you know what that shit's going to do. If you're, if you must use an illicit substance. Use a time-tested illicit suspense, yeah. substance. No. Go with the classics. No. You don't got to be a fucking hipster about it. <sighs> you don't got to discover the awesome new indie drug no one's even heard of yet. Take off your fucking fedora and do some heroin. I wonder if it's just like that, you know? I really wonder if it's if it's just like that. They they think it's it's cutting edge and suddenly they're spreading they're they're doing a goatsy impersonation for the police. I mean, if that doesn't scream hipster. <laughs> All right, they want. Yeah, I still haven't repaired disembodied orgasm hippo. I'm sorry, but here he is. I can make him shake. Oh, oh, I can't take it anymore. What's funny is I guess somebody found one of these on eBay and brought yep. it to MagFest. Mm -hmm. And you guys didn't know that it vibrates. Derek was very disturbed by that. He was like, you never told me that thing vibrates. And I'm like, yeah, I thought you could see it on camera. And he's like, no, it's really upsetting. And now disembodied orgasm hippo wears a meth hat because I have one on my desk. It's a little big for his head, but you know. Yeah, I still haven't fixed him. Little screwdriver is all you need. Little tiny one. You know, but ask, really your, ask one of your sister's husbands. I'm sure they've got a Swiss Army knife somewhere. I'm I'm dating a dude who works construction. He has every kind of screwdriver. I just keep forgetting to ask him to bring one of the small ones. I only have really enormous screwdrivers because the tools my dad left me were like eat shit until it works tools. Like they weren't finesse tools. They were hit shit really hard with this until it does what you want or shatters tools. So I have like foot and a half long screwdrivers. My dad called that a th that is belt. Yeah, like well. Beat it until he does what you wanted to do. Oh, see, my, my dad only hit inanimate objects, but he hit them really hard. And I learned that from him. And so, you know. Uh, 
All right. Well, he'll be back someday, someday. And I want it. I thought I was going to have way better picture quality tonight because I want to show you all the fancy camera that you all bought me. Yeah. By contributing to logo campaign. It's a camera. We have it's to fun. get a dongle, though. But um, my Mac, which is like the kind of the bane of my existence this week, doesn't have an HDMI hookup for an HDMI cable. So I've got it hooked into the USB port and I've got it charging. And I thought, gosh, I could actually have decent picture quality on the bit for a change. But no, we need a dongle. Dongle is one of the best words in computing like kind of that would get us on the show. Right. What is a I dongle? I don't think I want your dongle. Well, no, Apple makes them. I don't think I want Steve Jobs' dead dongle. 